Public Policy and Education, Module 4. This PowerPoint is designed to highlight certain points in the chapter and serve as a guide to important understandings from the chapter. However, this PowerPoint will not provide every piece of information you need to know in order to successfully complete this course and internalize your learning. The expectation is that you will read the chapters assigned. Use this PowerPoint as a guide to help you as you preview, then read the chapters. Trust, such a small word, yet such a big thing. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. From the New King James Version. Here's another way to put it. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Sometimes we just want to do it our way when we should be leaning and trusting on the Lord God Almighty. My prayer for us today is, Lord, help us to lean on, trust in, and be confident in you and the things you have for us to do as leaders. Policy Actors at the State Level in the last module, we discussed how leaders must know who the major groups and individuals are who have power, not only in the district or community, but those who have power at the city, state, and national level. In this module, we will discuss the major groups and individuals, policy actors, involved in the policy process at the state level. So why look at state policy? The Tenth Amendment to the United States Constitution says, The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. So, control over education and education policy are reserved to the states. As leaders, we need to know who these policy actors are because they affect the policy changes that directly impact us at the local level. The groups we will read and learn about this module are the legislative branch, the executive branch, the judicial branch, non-governmental policy actors, and mass media. Functions of the legislative branch include writing and passing laws, developing the state budget, holding hearings, studying policy issues, and conducting investigations. The Texas State Legislature is bicameral. There are two houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The Senate is the smaller of the two, while the House of Representatives is larger. However, senators serve longer terms, four years, than members of the House of Representatives. Since the members of the House of Representatives only serve two-year terms, there tends to be more turnover there. Each house has officers. The officer of the Senate is the president of the Senate. In Texas, the lieutenant governor serves as the president of the Senate. The officer of the House of Representatives is the Speaker of the House and is elected by members of that House. The two most powerful committees are the Education and Finance Committee. Each House has its own committees. Serving as chair of one of these committees is a very powerful position. Each senator or representative also has a legislative staff. Leaders need to know who these staff members are and develop relationships with them. Many times, these staff members control access to the member and also work on policy with the member. The governor is influential in state policy. In Texas, the governor appoints the commissioner of education. The governor also has veto power over any laws produced by the legislature. The State Board of Education is an elected body and sets policy and standards for Texas public schools, 
including charters. The Commissioner of Education is appointed by the Governor and is the head of the State Department of Education, the Texas Education Agency. The State Department of Education in Texas is the Texas Education Agency, or TEA. This agency oversees Texas primary and secondary public education. This agency works with the State Board of Education to develop rules and regulations for legislation that is education related. Texas judicial system has three types of courts, trial courts, appellate courts, and the Supreme Court. These are state courts and should not be confused with the federal court system. Each Texas public school district has an elected board. The school board develops local district policies and implements state and federal policies. Superintendents are hired by the school board and are the chief executive officers of the districts. They work closely with the board and are responsible for implementation of district, state, and federal policies. Interest groups seek to influence policy in their favor. Interest groups sometimes employ lobbyists to advance their agenda. Lobbyists work to develop relationships with governmental policy actors and provide those government actors with information about the concerns of the interest group that has hired them. As you develop your policy handbook, you should learn more information about education interest groups, non-educational interest groups, policy networks, and policy planning organizations. Just as we know that everything you read on the internet is not necessarily true, so must you realize that not everything you read in newspapers, magazines, hear on radio and television, etc. are all factual. Editors decide what will be on the media agenda and that agenda may not necessarily support education. Think about it. Think about how mass media influences education policy and reflect on what this means for the general public. Have you been influenced by mass media?